Hi all, this is the game that I played uh, yesterday evening and um, I lost this one but it was very interesting because I met the same variation that I had met the, um, a week ago in a game when I was playing the period defense um, so each time that I lose a game I want to know where did I go wrong and what could I have done better and I remembered that here in this position I had played queen to a5 last week and after reviewing it and analyzing it and, and, and reading in my uh, theory book of the pair defense I remember that the best move here is knight b to d7 with the idea that if white wants to launch a kingside attack with f3 and g4 black can play the knight to b6 and make the d7 square uh, available for the other knight on, uh, from f6 so I played knight to d7 here but my opponent didn't play f3 but knight to f3 and I played knight to b6 here but actually for black it's a better way to respond is to play e5 here the thing is the difference between f3 and knight f3 is that with knight f3 white wants to have a possibility of advancing his e-pawn immediately so this knight on f3 is looking at the center and that's the reason why it's better for black here to play e5 there are different options here if white takes on e5 then e takes e5 h3 is a useful move to prevent eventually knight to uh, g4 by black bishop can go to b7 the other bishop to g7 after a4 a6 knight to e2 is an, an interesting move that was played also in the game uh, but in a different position but the idea of knight to e2 is on one hand to bring the knight to the king side to g3 and also to be able to advance the c-pawn and in this case the c-pawn can even try to go to c5 now to prevent this pawn from advancing uh, up to e5 there is an idea for black and that's playing queen to e7 here to control the c5 square with the knight and the queen so this is actually the uh, theoretically correct way of playing with black so playing e5 immediately in case of knight to f3 well in the game I'll go back now to the position after knight to f3 I played knight to b6 so this was actually a possibility for white to play e5 immediately and go for a for a dynamic attack in the center but he didn't he played h3 I played bishop to g7, bishop h6, castles, castles. Now I played queen to c7, realizing that I need to play this move e5. Now I cannot play e5 immediately because it's not supported enough. So that's why I played queen to c7. Now if my opponent would have allowed me to play e5, I would have been happy. But my opponent didn't give me the time, he played a4 now he's threatening to take on um, on b5 and win a pawn so I played b4 here the knight goes to e2 and now I played a5 to prevent white from playing a5 himself and here I played c3 and I thought for a long time here and I didn't like the idea of taking on c3 because then the c file would be opened after knight takes for example or queen takes and later I thought there is a rook coming to the c file and my queen on c7 doesn't look very nice so all kinds of threats like knight to b5 start arising so what I did after c3 is I played bishop to a6 now he took on g7 he cannot take by the way immediately the bishop on a6 because then 
I take on e4, attacking the queen. And if the queen goes to e3, e now I take on h6, queen takes, and now I retake here. So that means that I have won this pawn on e4, and black is okay. But of course, my opponent didn't take on a6, c plate first, bishop takes g7. King takes g7, and now bishop takes a6. Rook takes a6, and the knight goes to g3. Here I took on, on c3, and he took back with the pawn. And somehow, here I missed the... Um, I missed the threat of white. I played c5 here, thinking that this is the place where things are happening. But actually, I missed white's next move, queen to g5. Now white starts putting more and more pressure on my king, threatening knight f5 check. So a move like h6 is useless. Actually, I should have played h6 here to prevent queen to g5. Still, white has initiative with e5. After taking on e5, knight takes e5 is according to Fritz the best move. And black can play c5. So still white has a slight advantage but black has counterplay now in the game as I said I played c5 here and he played queen to g5 so I realized that Bla uh, white has threats like knight to f5 check and then the queen entering um, to, to h6 so I played e6 here to control the f5 square. He played e5. I took on e5 and he took again. And now it doesn't look beautiful, but I went with my knight to g8 to keep control of these two dark squares. White is actually playing very well in the sense that since he has exchanged the dark squares uh, bishops, my dark squares around the king can become weak. He played knight to h5 here, king goes to h8, knight f6, and here I played h6, queen to h4, king to g7. And we were entering into some time trouble here, and instead of going for for uh, an, an, an immediate attack, white plays actually very wisely. He brings more pieces into the attack by rook to d1. I played knight to e7, and now he played another good move, c4, taking away the d5 square for my knights. I played rook a to a8, queen to f4. Now the idea of queen to f4 is to be able to play eventually g4 without leaving the queen out of play. Rook a to d8 and here I played queen to d6. I played knight to f5 attacking the rook and here I played rook a to d1 sacrificing the exchange on d6 and this is the moment when I made my really serious mistake. Instead of taking on a4 for example because white hasn't has no no direct threat here what I did is I took the rook and that gave him a strong attack and this is terrible for me and after this I again I went with my queen to the worst place actually c6 because then he can play later the knight the other knight to e5 attacking my queen winning a tempo rook h8 queen f6 the king went to g8 and now he took my rook so I played on until the time control and after a few moves after d6 d7 I, uh, I resigned this is completely lost for me 
So okay, I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I'll see you next time on YouTube. Leave your comments.